Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. First day on the job site. This is a little patio in the backyard. The homeowner actually started this project as a DIY and he's going to complete it after we get the concrete in here. But he got all the underground in here. You can see all the trenches. And uh, there's the electrical. We've got some sewer. We've got water. You can see those 6x6 six six brackets there. Those are going to be for the future patio cover. But the reason the trench is stopped in some areas and you don't see the completion and the riser coming up is because we're going to position the footings and we're going to hang those 4x4 four four brackets. And, now, and then we're going to com continue the runs on the electrical, the water, because they're going to come up the side of a, a post, in other words. Two inches below. Two inches below. So it's gonna be two inches below here and there. All right, so we've got all the laser levels shot in. That's the first thing I wanted to do is to see if I had to actually remove dirt and how much we would actually be below lawn for water drainage purposes. Because we want the water to slope away from the house. In order to do that, we had to go below the existing lawn level. That's pretty typical. When you get in these older houses where everything's been growing for years and there's a lot of buildup with tree roots and things like that nature, um, elevations change from the original design, no doubt about it. But we got to make the new stuff work. So we're cutting it down. We're removing some root roots. As you can see, there's some actual roots buried beneath there. And we're working around all these stub ups. We're trying to avoid the open trenches so we don't have to redig them. Now I'm going to overcut a little bit on the edges. That way we can get our form in easy enough. We actually went with two, about two and a half inches slope across this patio area. And that's all you need on an area this size. Unless you're, because we're going with a, a standard non-slip broom texture finish. Now if you're doing some deep stamp or something um, that's going to retain water with a lot of joints and stuff like that. You're going to probably want a little bit more slope to get it to flow out of an irregular surface. But this broom finish is pretty flat, you know, so the water is going to drain on minimal slope. So now we've laid out the post. These are the footings for the new patio cover area. We've dug those out. And what I'll do, rather than, sometimes I'll, I'll go ahead and pour the uh, post straps or the 4x4 post straps. I'll pour them in ahead of schedule and then pour the slab around them. But in this case, I'm going to suspend them in the air by steel stakes and tie wire and then pour the slab footing all in one shot. what I've done I've drove steel stakes in right along a string line I pulled the string line right where the posts are gonna be right on edge of patio that way my posts are lined up with each other and they're nice and straight and parallel then I plumb them up tie wire them to the steel stake I actually set up the hole of the stake and I lined that hole up with the post bracket at the correct elevation so there's a lot of things going on when you're driving a steel stake in this situation now here's the base this is crushed concrete recycled concrete makes a great base we're going to spread that throughout the area about inch and a half two inches deep once we get it all spread out nice and evenly we'll soak the base down let it soak in for about 30 minutes and then we'll hit it with a plate compactor i just want to give a quick thanks to the sponsor of this video skillshare skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people explore new skills develop existing interest and get lost in creativity they offer courses ranging anywhere from animation creative writing, and even marketing. 
We really liked Helice's courses on Adobe Premiere. We thought her courses hit home for us because as you know, a majority of our channel makes up how to's. We learned things like color correction and grading, even editing B-roll footage. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And after that, it's only $10 a month. Thanks again, Skillshare. We've almost got all the bass in here and I'll just fine tune it. Get it good and wet. Let that soak. Then run the plate compact over. Once we get it compacted, then we'll start the process of tying the reinforcement in there. We'll be using some 3 8 inch round fiberglass rods with an epoxy resin. That's the bonder to the concrete. In other words, if you were to break this concrete out in the future, you wouldn't be able to separate the concrete from the fiberglass. And it'll never rust. Whether it's on the bottom, the top, wherever it might be, it's not going to change how it is right now. And we're putting this at about 18 inch centers. Now I'm setting a screed board right down the middle. It's just a straight slope, so when I set that those screed pins, I just pulled the line from half inch below weep screed to top of form, marked my steel stake, hung the uh, thing that ride the uh, rod board or screed board on. There it is. And I duct taped those on there because a lot of times they, they get loose or banged around and fall off. And you get off elevation but now they won't those steel stakes you see suspending those four by four brackets those will, will be removed as we go as the concrete hardens up we'll do that off of knee boards in the middle on the edges we can just reach out and grab them here's the uh, mobile one synthetic use right out of my truck going on the lumber preserving the wood trying to get more uses out of it and also bond breaker from the concrete martin's concrete pumping will be taking care of this one also i'll be adding some fiber mesh into the concrete truck which I happen to have on my website for sale at about $3.50 a pound. Of course, there's a shipping. Unless you pick it up in person, then there's no shipping, and it's just $3 a pound. Those rod boards that you see are two by fours and they're aluminum, so they stay perfectly straight all the time, unless you drive over them or some or a tractor runs over them. That's the only way they're going to get crooked. So it's just me, my brother, and my son pouring this one out. And you can see those brackets. I set the brackets about three quarters, half inch above top of concrete. That way there's no water setting underneath the posts. So your wood lasts a lot longer. In other words, you don't have standing water on your posts. So you don't get the dry rot and all that. It's actually going to be a barbecue island. That's why you see all the electrical stub ups over there. It's an L barbecue that fits into the corner and wraps around one of the posts. 
actually in cases two of the posts, this island. Now we're gonna cut a few joints in here. We have one down the middle, and then we're gonna go off of both edges of the fireplace. And those posts are lined up with one side of the fireplace, so that one joint not only hits the posts, but it also hits the corner of the fireplace. So simultaneously what we have going there is a fiber, fiberglass funny float, and then we have a funny trowel right behind that. Now we're cutting the tie wire off of those post brackets, pulling the steel stakes out. Concrete's hard enough to where the uh, post brackets aren't going to move at this point. Now the concrete to this point is hard enough to actually get out there on knee boards and trowel it out, clean up the joints, and give it a pass. In the future, if you noticed earlier, we were talking that two inches below concrete, the top of slab on this edge right near us. That lawn's obviously high for the water to drain off naturally and go somewhere beyond just pooling there. So what's going to happen is because he has the drains and stuff in there, he's going to actually dig out, you know, a foot down and put a gravel um, French area drain all the way down this side. That'll um, hit a perforated drain pipe and then it'll carry it to the street. So he's gonna be working with this lawn elevation a little bit and getting everything to come out of this yard. And that broom right there is 50% horsehair, 50% nylon. The perfect combination for a nice finish. Here's your final look. This is same day. We've already stripped it out. We're ready to move on to the next one. The one joint on the outside edge of that fireplace, you'll never see it because that is actually the edge of the island, barbecue island as well. Well, thank you for watching my videos. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification button. That way you'll be notified as soon as I upload the next video. Have a good one.